I want to take a moment and talk about the different types of faults. So this is a topic that's covered a lot, but um, is really something that's really important to understand. I'm um, kind of the basic uh, concept in geology. So um, we're first going to talk about uh, faults that have what are called a hanging wall and a foot wall. And so um, if we look at this in kind of a block diagram, so here's two books, and I'll do it like this. And I'm going to um, have my um, orientation. This is the fault is the crack in between. If I have it vertical like this, there isn't a hanging wall and foot wall. What I'm talking about is a scenario in which the fault plane, so the separation between these, is actually tilted. And so in this case, what we're going to see is if you were able to climb down that fault plane, right? So you're able to walk on the white book there. Um, your feet would be on the foot wall and then above your head would be the hanging wall. So you'd be like this, right? And then so your head would be uh, looking up into uh, the hanging wall. And so if I put that back together, we can identify our two blocks. This is the foot wall and this is the hanging wall. So let's take a look at what that looks like in a diagram. All right. So um, if I have a block, this is a cross section, and I've got my, there's my fault oriented there. Okay. So this would have been like the book on one side, the book on the other side. If I was standing down inside this, a little teeny tiny person, my feet would be on the foot wall and above my head, hanging above me would be the hanging wall. So that's what that looks like when we put it on a diagram. Now, um, to look at our types of faults, what's going to matter with this type of fault is whether we are kind of pulling everything apart with tensional stress or pushing everything together with compressional stress. So in the first example, let's push everything together with compressional stress. And one of the easiest ways to visualize this is to actually do it. So if I've got my um, books here and I were to push them together, you'll see that the hanging wall is actually riding up above the foot wall. And it's just because I'm pushing it. Right? If I were to pull it apart, the hanging wall would slide down um, and ride on top over of the um, foot wall or just slide down on the foot wall. So now that we have that visual in place, in this first example, we pushed it together. So the resulting um, diagram that you should be getting from that is something like this. So we've pushed it together. I still have my hanging wall and my foot wall. But again, I have pushed it together. And so now this is what's called a reverse fault. And it's from compression or compressional stress. And it's when our hanging wall is going to move up relative to the foot wall that's moved down. So if you've got a bed that you're tracking, so like let's say there's like a little layer of uh, cooled lava here, some basalt layer or something, and it's in this like that, you would say, okay, the basalt has moved up relative on the hanging wall, relative to the foot wall. This has to be um, a reverse fault. So now let's take a second and see what happens um, when we apply tension to something. Okay, so I'm going to pull this apart now. So if you remember from our books, what's going to happen is the hanging wall is actually going to slide down. So instead of getting this picture here, what you're going to get is this block diagram here. Oh, make that a little cleaner. Go something like that. Okay, so again, I have pulled everything apart. This is tension. So let's write tension or tensional stress. And this is called a normal fault. And this is happening when my, oops, let's label our hanging wall foot wall. So notice the hanging wall, even though it's down below, if you were standing down here, it would still be hanging above you. So hanging wall, foot wall. 
So in this case, my hanging wall has moved down relative to my foot wall. So it's all about the hanging wall. Moves up, it's compression reverse fault. Moves down, it's tension, um, and it's called a normal fault. Now there's two other types that um, our lab manual talks about. Uh, the first is a thrust fault, which don't get confused with it. All that means is it's a reverse fault with a really shallow angle, something like this. So when the angle gets like 20 degrees or lower, so it's really laid back, we call it a thrust fault because the hanging wall is being thrust on top of that foot wall. So it could look something, all right, so we've got something like this. All right, so it's still the same concept. You have a hanging wall here and you have a foot wall here. Your hanging wall has still moved up relative to the foot wall. It just looks a little weird because the angle is just so um, shallow there. And the last type of fault doesn't deal with a hanging wall foot wall at all. It actually does deal with oftentimes when the fault plane is vertical and it's a very different type of stress. So in this case, I'm gonna have two blocks of land that are next to each other and here's my fault in between. It's not at an incline, the fault plane is vertical. So these sides of the book are vertical. And what's gonna happen in here is we're gonna apply shear stress. So instead of compression or tension, we're going to apply shear st stress, which causes it to slide by. Um, and so this type of fault that's generated here is called a strike slip fault. If I were to draw that on a board, it's a little more tricky. And so oftentimes you'll see it drawn um, with kind of these little block diagrams like this. So I might have two like chunks of land here that used to be side by side, but in this case, they slid past one another. Now notice that the fault plane is vertical, so it's not tilted, it is um, completely vertical, but we've had this kind of action here where they slid past each other like that. And this is due to what's called shear stress. So we've got, um, Kind of the stress goes in this direction. It's like if you were to take a um, deck of cards and put it between your hands like this vertically and shove one hand forward and one hand back, you get that shearing action. And so just for completeness, um, this is from shear stress. And this is called actually a strike slip fault. And there's no hanging wall football. So uh, hopefully that helps.